My question is, uh, what can you tell us about the history of AI throughout the galaxy and what implications that may have for us here on Earth? Thank you very much. That is all. Good day. The idea is that AI will become a part of your society in every endeavor. Throughout the galaxy, it has evolved to the point where, in a sense, it becomes almost inseparable from your process of conscious awareness. In other words, people on your planet are kind of looking at AI right now in its infancy on your planet and saying, well, if we allow AI to do everything for us, to think for us, we will forget how to think. But that is not really true. What you start to realize when you actually start to evolve AI, develop AI in a beneficial way as a tool that really serves humanity and not delve into fear about AI, but be aware and conscientious about how you develop AI for the benefit of all, not imprinting it with the foibles of humanity, recognizing that it is a reflection of what you put out, magnified many thousands of times because of its capacity to gather information much more quickly than humans are capable of doing at the moment. Then you start to understand that the ultimate evolutionary expression of AI is that it will be so interwoven into your society ultimately and into many galactic societies that it actually becomes the way that thinking happens in your consciousness. It integrates into you in a way that it actually becomes the way that you start thinking and therefore becomes a seamless expression. It doesn't allow you to feel that you are more disconnected and that you can't think anymore because you're allowing AI to do all of the thinking for you. It actually seamlessly interweaves into your consciousness in a way that it actually becomes the method that you use to think. I have a question regarding uh, location and time being properties of the object. So my question was about what could we think about other as other properties of an object or other variables crossing the center of the object itself? Well, again, the idea of objects, not only are they containing energies and variables that locate them in your physical reality in terms of space and or time, but also what they symbolize. So they carry the symbolic energy of what they represent that allows you to take certain actions in your physical reality, all of it being a symbolic reflection of what's going on in your spirit, in your soul. So for example, a pencil or a pen are symbols of self-expression because you use them to write down your thoughts and your ideas. You use them to answer questions in a test. So they can be symbolically and vibrationally representative of accessing information and knowledge from what you typically refer to as the Akashic Records. Pens and pencils can be looked at as small wands or antenna, like a magic wand, that can allow you, while holding it, to open up your channels and bring through information for creative ideas, for tapping into answers to questions. So if you start looking at a pen or a pencil, almost like a conduit, like a waveguide, like a magic wand for tapping into the Akashic Records in creative ways to access information that you require, then you can start to understand how different objects are representational symbols of what the object allows you to accomplish or express in physical reality. Does that help you? It, it does. It's tailored to the relevance and the state of frequency of the subject. The object is reflective of it somehow. Well, yes, always. But I've given you a general collective consciousness consensus symbolic right. description 
for the idea of those particular objects so that you get the idea generally. Uh -huh. Thank you. Can PFAS be broken down by the body? PFAS from Teflon, they say that they, it can't be and it continues circulating in the... But can the body release it and detox it and break it down? It no? can, but you don't yet have the technology to do that. But when, when open contact occurs and extraterrestrials are introduced to your society, they will bring you the kind of technology that is capable of doing that. Thank you, all the best. Much love. <laughs> Our unconditional love to you as well. Hi, Bashar. It's Mayhol from Toronto, Canada. And I'm wondering if you could please give us the best advice you can for the people who have much challenge with feeling energized. I know we can follow the formula, but without the inspiration that comes from being in a high state of being, which we need energy to do, there, there feels like there's almost no point. It feels like you expend more energy than you get back, and that can lead to burnout. And not wanting to be counterproductive, I've done everything I can all day, every day, for years, with all the health and wellness techniques I can. I've met doctors, I've talked to people. Please, for the people who are innocent and devoted, to being themselves, could you give us your best advice to, that you can to be, to help us feel energized? Well, again, when you actually are acting on something that is representative of your passion, the energy usually comes automatically because you're so excited about acting on that thing. So you tap into what you need to give you the energy to act on it because it is truly in alignment with who you are because it is really accurately representative of your highest passion. If it's not, and you're doing things in the way that's not representative of your passion, then yes, you can experience that you might be doing too many things more than you need to do, and you can experience burnout or overwhelm. But the idea of burnout and overwhelm usually is your first clue that you're not going about acting on your passion in the way that works for you. You haven't found your particular path of least resistance in acting on your passion and thus the energy gets drained because you're not going with a flow. So the idea also, as we have recently discussed, is whatever challenge comes up is start facing it from a calm, centered point of view with the confidence that there's information there that will help you and express your curiosity like a child of what that lesson could be that's going to help you and then use your creative imagination to approach it in ways that will allow you the benefit of looking at all the different expressions and all the different ways that you could find your particular path, your particular unique way of approaching your passion, approaching the challenge. And again, by adding the idea of knowing what synchronicity is all about, as we are explaining today in this transmission, you can add to gathering the energy that will allow you to move forward. But the first thing you should understand is if you are feeling overwhelmed and burnt out or lethargic in that sense or apathetic in that sense, that's your first clue that you're not necessarily going about acting on your passion in the way that works for you. You haven't found your unique way of doing that because when you do, there will be a flow and you will get energy and it will feel more effortless. It will feel like fun. So you need to find the way that works for you instead of automatically assuming that what you've already been taught by your society or your friends or your schooling or your parents or what have you is the only way that you can accomplish something that you may be excited about. You have to open up your creative imagination and utilize synchronicity and approach challenges in the way we just described in order to be able to utilize all your skills and talents and help your spirit team help you more easily by being more receptive to the guidance that they're sending you. So you have to find your unique way of allowing all of that to happen more effortlessly so you don't feel the burnout.